Love you too. Ow! <laughs> Sweet, sweet. So I, I think a big observation this week from everybody has just been how relaxed, how happy you are, how free spirit I guess you feel. What, what's different about this week that, that, that you're feeling those emotions like? You know, um, honestly, I, I feel like I'm just at a place where I'm just confident in my own skin. You know what I mean? You know, I, I, my career goes up and down and up and down, and what I've learned, whether I'm up on the up like right now or the down moments, just, just to enjoy it all. It's just such a privilege to be a part of the UFC, to be the light heavyweight champion of the UFC. And, uh, man, we got the best fans in the world, and it just feels good, man. I really just feel so alive. You brought your family out for the first time. Why was, why yeah. was that decision made? Well, my oldest daughter, Leah, wants to be famous so bad. <laughs> so uh, I just thought I'd give them the opportunity to just feel it, and hopefully uh, it inspires them to work really hard in school and, and pursue their dreams. You know, this morning we did finally see the pre-fight drug test results. The Pico Grams were there. Yeah. I guess at this point it's expected, but I wonder, I mean, like, is there a part of you that when those come out, you're just like, damn it, I wish these had nothing in them. Yeah, absolutely. You know, every time it's like an oh darn it moment. But um, but I'm, I'm comfortable with the idea that it's going to be a part of my career, and I don't know how long this is going to last. Uh, what makes me sleep good at night is knowing that I've, I've – submitted myself to every drug test. I am getting tested by three of the most powerful agencies in the world. Um, I've never avoided the test. Um, and I just feel like the more I, I am accessible, the more data they'll understand they'll have in this situation and, um, and the more everybody will understand. You know, I'm just I'm figuring out that, you know, there's, there's baseball players in Major League Baseball that has the same exact supplement inside of them that are posting as well i just found out there's another ufc fighter that has the same exact situation and um between major leagues baseball and the ufc i think they're coming to the conclusion that these drug testing agencies are too powerful and they're detecting things that don't help athletes at all and therefore they're allowing athletes to continue to compete so i know that i'm almost the leader in this whole this whole development and i'm comfortable in this space um i just wish I wish fans would not just look at the, the headlines and actually clicked on the links and read and learned what was really going on. But I've set myself free from any level of, of embarrassment. Um, I have no shame. I've, I've, I've said many times that I've never knowingly uh, done anything to do any type of sports enhancing uh, you know, drugs or whatnot. So now I'm just here getting back to what's most important, and that's my 13th world title, making the fans happy, and, and you know, trying to defeat a really promising young fighter. The terminology, the, the, the uh, title offense, not defense. Yeah, we call where did, it. Where did that come up? What was this? Yeah, Brandon Gibson started that a long time ago. He's just like, you know, I feel like a lot of times when a fighter's undefeated, they're trying to protect their undefeated record, and they start fighting defensively, and they start trying to fight not to lose. And our, our mentality is we're not protecting the belt. We're attacking more belts. And so that's the mentality, and uh, that's what it's been. There's a lot of respect between you and Anthony for this fight. In your last couple, it hasn't been like that. Yeah, it so hasn't. Do you prefer that? Do you like not having to do the trash talk? Or do you yeah, honestly, I think it's a lot more, it's definitely more refreshing to not have the trash talk. I understand we talk a lot of trash, the pay-per-view numbers go through the roof, um, but in my situation, you know, I got enough people who think I'm an asshole, so the last thing I need to be doing is call, you know, cursing someone out on TV. So yeah, this is definitely really refreshing, and, and I'm enjoying it. Anthony, sorry, um, Anthony was up here a few minutes ago, he thought something very interesting. He said that he felt like Cormier and Gustin were kind of distracted by the Pico Graham stuff and all that stuff, and it kind of hurt them in the fight, and he's not focusing on that. What do you think about, about him saying that? I think that they were focused on the Pico Graham situation a lot, but I also think that these guys are world-class athletes, and no matter no matter what you talked about leading up to the fight, I'm sure they were training their, with their whole hearts, and I'm sure their coaches made sure they were locked in. I mean, Cormier is an Olympic-level athlete, and... Um, and I just won't allow someone to blame what the pre-fight storyline was um, on, on a defeat. John, when you face someone like Anthony Smith, who has been the places he's been, has overcome what he's overcome, it's almost like he's playing with house money now. Like, is that an inherently dangerous place uh, for, to fight? Like what do you mean, because he's such an underdog? Yeah, he has nothing no to lose? Is that him. what you mean? Yeah. It's a dangerous position for me to fight someone like that. Um, because he has nothing to lose. He can go out there, close his eyes, and just swing for the fences. Uh, I wouldn't advise you doing that. Um, but um, 
yeah, he has nothing to lose in this situation. To believe it or not, I don't, I don't really realize why so many people are counting this guy out. He had 30 amateur fights. He had 40 professional fights. Uh, that's 70 fights. This guy is by far the most experienced guy I've ever fought, and he's the youngest guy I've ever fought in the UFC. So um, we look at him as a legitimate threat, and I know he's he's using that against me somehow, saying, "Why does John keep saying that he's taking me serious? Why does John keep saying that he's taking me serious?" Like as if I'm trying to convince myself that I'm taking myself, you know, the fight serious. But my coaches know that I'm taking the fight serious. My body knows that I'm taking the fight serious. And he'll see on Saturday that I took this fight serious. He said that he woke up today at uh, 206 pounds already. So right. He's already almost on weight. Yeah. How much are you cutting? And is that a disadvantage for him being, being that small already? So right now I weigh 215 pounds, which is a great weight to be at at this point. That's a, that's a more standard weight for a light heavyweight to be at at this time. Um, I'm going to lose probably five pounds tonight. I'm going to lose five pounds of water weight in the morning. And, uh, and that's, that's going to be really easy. As you can see right now, I'm not sucked out. I feel great. My energy's high. And um, I think it will be a little bit of a disadvantage. Um, I predict that I'll be lean uh, tomorrow and lighter. I won't be showing up around 226. I'm sorry, on Saturday, I won't be like 226 or anything like that. I'll probably be like more like 220 when I actually fight him. And uh, he's going to get a full light heavyweight that's lean and fast. And I think I'm going to get a, a kind of a, a big middleweight. So this will work against them. I had a lot of coffee. I'm sorry, guys. John, these test results from earlier, they're outside of your control. They're 100% outside like of my control. Outside your control and staying extra with the fans, staying extra with media yesterday. Are you trying to do everything in your control to make this a positive environment and take things away from the negative? Absolutely, absolutely. I've been a part of a lot of negativity in my career between, you know, fighting with DC on stage and, and, and you know, people accusing me of this and that or whatnot. And uh, finally, I'm just like, I'm, I'm on team positivity. I believe positivity conquers all. It does. The power of your intentions conquers all. And my intention is to have a great week, a great weekend, to make a lot of fans happy, and to bring that new design of that UFC belt back to Albuquerque, New Mexico. John, I noticed earlier in your career when you would face off, you would never look your opponent in the eye. But that day you're looking at him straight in the eye, you're getting really close. Why this but Well, you know, it varies. Some opponents I look in, look them in the eyes, and some I don't. Um, Gustafson believed he was my kryptonite. So I looked him, I didn't look him in the eyes just to let him know, you're not as big as you think you are. Um, and I looked Anthony in the eyes just to let the world know that I'm taking him serious. You know, because he's such a huge underdog, for me to look past him, I feel like it would be, it'd be a very disrespectful and, and arrogant thing to do. Where the rest of the world don't take him seriously, I look him in the eyes to let him know, despite what the odds makers say, you are getting my full and undivided attention. So that's, that's the answer. Today you found out about the you found out today, right? Yeah, I just found out about the Pikagrams. What's going on internally? Like, is there a moment where you're like, hey, this, this is happening again? Is this fight off? How, how did you process it initially? When it happened in my last fight, I, uh, I actually broke down crying. And I, I gave one of my buddies a hug, and, and I just cried in his, in his arms. And uh, and it felt great. He was just like, John, you've been through too much to, 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 to slow down now, you know? Um, when I found out the last event was was canceled and being switched over, I broke down crying, man. It, it really, it really hurt. And um, I'm at a place now where I've been hurt so many times, and, and so many things has happened. I've caused a lot of my own pain, and and there's been a lot of pain inflicted that wasn't um, in my control. And um, I just feel like I'm just so comfortable with this scenario now. I'm not going to allow anything to hurt me anymore. Um, everybody knows what's going on. Everybody knows that I have something in my system that is pulsing. And I feel like the majority of the fans that are actually going to take the time to read, which are the ones that actually matter right now, um, I think they know what's going on. So I, I take out any responsibility for this whole thing, and um, and I'm not going to let it ban me or break me. John, you've been tested. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, at least once a week since the last fight. At least yeah, more. at a minimum, but what is that most like? weeks were like is three it, times a week. Is it disruptive? I mean, when, when do they show up? I mean, how, how does that work? Is it yeah, it's, it's, it, it can be really crappy. I'm really fortunate that all the collectors are very respectful. Um, but they can come anywhere from, you know, I've had many times they've come at 6 o'clock a.m., and which is very disturbing to my training. Um, and then there's other times where they'll come at like 8 o'clock at night. Um, there's been times where I'm having team dinners or dinner with my family, and they'll call me and say, hey, John, where are you? And I'll, hey, I'm over here at Applebee's or whatever. And they'll literally come and sit at the table next to me, um, which, which is, um, it can be very embarrassing, but they're just doing their job. They're just sample collectors, and I got to do my job by 
by following the rules. So you got a bathroom at Applebee's and take a sample right I, I swear that has happened. I, not, Apple, not Applebee's specifically, but yes, this has happened. Yeah, I think I think uh, my next few fights are going to tell a lot about my legacy. Um, like I said, Anthony Smith is the first guy in the UFC that I fought that was actually younger than me. I've beaten a lot of extremely talented athletes in their prime, um, but Anthony is younger, and I'm excited just to answer questions to myself. How am I going to do with this next wave that's coming? You know, the Anthony Smiths, the uh, the uh, Tiago Santoses, the Corey Andersons, the Johnny Walkers. Uh, this is uh, these guys are young, they're hungry, and they're dream chasers. So I think my best years are ahead of me. This is the years where I need to kick it up even up to a higher level to remain at the position I'm in. Two more questions. John, what's your Harry. biggest turnaround since we've seen 126, 128? You became champion. You beat Bader in February. You fought Rashad just like less than two months later. And you sort of give off the vibe of that young John Jones now. You know, in this day and age, it feels like everyone's waiting around for a money fight, for a super fight. They win the belt. I do kind of feel like like my younger self. You know, I feel I feel set free from a lot of things that's happened. I finally learned how to forgive myself for a lot of things, and so I feel reborn in a way. And um, I feel like I have a second half of my career. And the question is, what are you going to do with the second half of your career? Uh, my second half, I, I, I vow to respect myself better, respect my body, respect my team, respect the organization and the fans, and just try to do better. And I know a great start to that is staying in the gym, staying busy. Not, not like I said, we don't, we don't look at title defenses. We look at title offenses. So to sit on the throne and and to make everyone wait and be bougie and talk about it, I don't want to fight him. Maybe there should be an interim builder. Maybe I should entertain heavyweight fights and all this crap. It's not fair to anybody. The man's next in line, you give him what he wants, and that's an opportunity to get that ass kicked. John, I want to ask you a final question. Guys. Even earlier, you, you were talking about how easy it is for you to make this weight cut to 205. Why do you think so many people are calling who want you to go to heavyweight? I think people want me to go to heavyweight because, um, quite frankly, they want to see me lose or get close to it or take some serious damage. And at heavyweight, the risk goes up tremendously. Uh, these guys are a lot bigger than me. And they say all the time, when you get a talented little guy versus a talented big guy, the odds are in the big guy's favor, right? So I think that's, I think that's the pressure. I don't think it's fair, really, um, because I've always been a light heavyweight. Despite who the champion's been, I've never challenged anybody uh, at heavyweight. And um, I feel like I'll move up to heavyweight on my own terms when I feel like uh, the UFC is playing ball with me contractually to, to entertain that. No one's entertained any idea of switching a contract for any super fights. So, we're just kind of stuck at this spot here, fighting that light heavyweight. All right, guys, it's time to get to the fans. Feel free to film some of that. There's going to be a lot of genuine smiles out here today. All right, I'll see you guys. Thank you guys so much.